Hello and welcome to Inside CU Sports. I'm Sheldon Dossett and today I have as my first guest, head men's soccer coach, uh, Adam Preston. Adam, how are you doing? Good, nice to be here. Yeah, uh, thank you for being here. Um, so it's your 19th season here. Um, so coming into your 19th season, what do you think sets this team apart and makes them distinct? in comparison to the other For sure, teams. yeah. Every team has its own personality, its own group of characters. I think this team has gone through some of the hardships of the last year that a lot of us have experienced, and um, that has kind of defined who they are. Uh, sometimes that's a benefit, sometimes it's a negative, uh, but it is starting to show who they are and pull their character out. Um, you have a big roster this year, um, and there's a lot of roster carryover from last year. Um, so what benefit is that? Um, coming from a not so normal year to some closer semblance of, of normalcy now? Yeah, I think it allows us to have a big pool of players to look at, to choose from, to challenge each other. I think competition is always a good thing. And when you can properly refine that, it helps these players to bring the very best out. There's always someone behind you pushing you to be your very best. Um, each individual is challenged to compete. And I think that really does do a job in bringing out their best. Uh, you all recently had a match against Boyce College, uh, which you all were victorious 10-0. to zero. What sort of impressions did you as a team pull from that victory? Boyce is a, an interesting game. We've, we've had a history with them and we know their coach very well. Coach Sin's done some camps with them. Um, and it's kind of a game to fill ourselves out, to get a little bit of experience. And uh, we knew that the game wasn't going to be the most difficult, but we wanted to test ourselves and see different scenarios we could run through the game, different tactics we could put in place. And I thought the guys responded really well. Um, a game takes a while to break, and I think they were methodical in the way they approached it, and they took their time and let the game develop. Um, and then when it, the time came, they, they made a difference. We probably weren't as clinical as we needed to be on the day, um, and we've approached this week coming into the St. Xavier game with the mindset of we've got to fix these problems, and that's what you always hope. We had a very tough preseason slate. Uh, played Indiana Tech, who's 14 in the nation. Played UNOH, who's a top 15 team as well. Um, then played Hanover. All difficult games that helped draw little pieces out. And then getting to a match that counts against Boyce, it was good to see how some of those things had um, exposed some of our weaknesses and helped us to see ways that we can play and be the most effective. And one of the benefits of being able to work here is to go to all the athletics events. And so I, I was grateful to be there to, to watch you all play. Um, I did notice that the uh, aggression factor, you know, you're shaking off some rust in the first half, sure. and uh, but then it seemed like you turned it, uh, the guys turned it up to almost another level there in the second half. Yeah, it takes, it does take time. And we're a very physical team. We're a very athletic team. Um, and sometimes we forget that we have to play the game and we just rely on our athleticism. Um, I think that's one of the traits of this team is they want to lean into that. And when they calm down, they actually play the game the right way. They're a really good team with very good players. But it takes some time to get back into the flows. And a lot of these guys would have played in past summers and uh, gone home and had some experience. And with COVID, they've kind of been shut down. So it goes from being full on, full off to full on instead of consistent rise through their time. A lot of, of course, men's soccer players, international players, uh, how have you experienced they have been uniquely impacted? Uh, maybe carryovers from last season uh, or n incoming uh, players as well from the you know, the pandemic and yeah. all the issues. I think we have 20 plus international uh, representations. So it's, it's been different with each country. Mm -hmm. um, in some places they are in complete lockdown, can't do anything. Um, we'd give them a run packet and they would work through that. And we track all their summer runs through Strava. So they're competing against each other and we can see where they stand. Um, and other guys had a lot more freedom. It's kind of depending on where their country stood individually. Um, and then trying to build them all in the same mindset where we're coming to the same place. It's good to let them see the freedoms they're going to have when they come here, um, the ability to actually play the game. Some countries were opening back up through the summer and others were having difficulties. Um, but each situation was unique. And I think it was really good for them to be able to look at each other and see that it's okay in some places. And for the ones that were having difficulties in their countries, it's like, okay, well, there are places where it's okay. And we're all coming to a place in Campbellsville where they're going to be well taken care of. And I think the older guys who had experienced what it was like in the, the heavy stage of the pandemic last year we're able to express to them what it's going to be like. And mm -hmm. I think that helped kids uh, really be excited about coming here and being part of what's going on um, and helped to motivate them to be prepared when they arrive. Speaking of insight from previous, <coughs> previous seasons, um, we have Tom, <coughs> Tom Edge, who is set to, against Shawnee at home, is set to break the record for all-time games played for, for men's soccer. So 
What has Tom meant specifically to the team? And um, have you talked to Tom any about this potential record that he is poised to set? <laughs> yeah, we've had long conversations about it. Yeah. Uh, Tom is the ultimate team guy, but he loves the individual award. Uh, when he came to me with the thought of coming back for this fifth COVID year, um, we discussed that specific thing. It was a selling point for me. He's got a couple grandparents back home that are sick that he's helped take care of. And it was a hard decision for him to come back because as they're at a certain stage in their life, he wanted to make sure he was getting time with them. Um, when he did make that decision, he was all in. He's our captain, um, just the hardest worker that you'll ever meet. I probably could play about five different sports here at Campbellsville. That's his level of athleticism. Um, but when we started talking about that, you could see him just light up a little bit. And it was that little extra motivation to be on that sheet as the all-time uh, appearance record. And I th it was a big deal for him. And I think he's excited about that. He, I don't tell him too much about it. I don't want to get him too invested in it. But he does get excited. Hey, coach, have you looked into that? When's it going to happen? You know, he's, he's very keen to make that happen. Well, it's awesome it's going to be at home as well. Mm -hmm. That'll be a really special moment. Sure. Um, you mentioned it, uh, St. Xavier. What sort of things are you wanting to work with the team based on their previous performance and then heading into to the game? Yeah. We've watched quite a bit of film on St. Xavier. Uh, they're a good team, really high energy, um, good level of talent, a few really dangerous players. So we're going to have to be prepared. We spent the last night, we had a really good session. We were working on our pressing techniques, working on how we're going to play, building out of the back, um, how our build-up play is going to go through the attacking sets, and then trying to clean up a few of the issues that we've had. We've been overly aggressive in the tackle. Um, we need to slow the game down, try to stop the ball, and then make tackles as needed. So, you know, we're going to spend this week really heavily investing in ourselves. And I think the, the important thing is the guys understand that. They know that this week has to be great for us to have a chance to win that game. But I think it'll be a really good competitive match and should be exciting to watch. Yeah. What sort of benefit, there's sort of an extended period here between the boys game and St. Xavier. Uh, what kind of benefit does that land, uh, the extra time? It, it helps us refocus and really, like, all the preseason games have pulled out some major issues. Mm -hmm. Boys, you can get through a game with those issues, um, but now we can really dig in. And you have the film available to say, okay, look, here's our issue here. And I think that's the modern player wants to know why. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they like to understand exactly what's going on. And, you know, I'm an old school guy, an old school coach, old school player. Coach says to do something, you do it. But these guys, I think to get through to them in the right ways, you have to communicate on their level. And helping them understand the reasoning behind the things that we do makes a big difference. And that's what those games have allowed us to do. And this week gives us that time to use all that information to prepare for this match. Well, thank you for coming thank by you. the show, uh, Coach. And we will be right back with more Inside CU Sports. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks all healthy donors to schedule an appointment to give now. With the coronavirus outbreak, it is important to maintain a sufficient blood supply. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please schedule an appointment today. Download the blood donor app, visit redcrossblood.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. I think it's just vapor and flavors. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes. Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? Get your head out of the cloud. Talk to your kid about vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Wash your hands, stay home, cover your cough. It's our new reality with COVID-19. The anxiety can be overwhelming. If you're feeling extra worried, you're not alone. 
you can still contact a mental health professional. They're ready to help you get through this. And remember, prepare, focus on the essentials, protect, keep some space from people outside your home, and disinfect a lot. Get the facts at kycovid19.ky.gov. Prepare, protect, disinfect. Hello and welcome back to Inside CU Sports. Joining me now is Assistant Athletic Director of Game Operations, Michaela Jarman. She's also a golf assistant coach. So yes. uh, that's a nice little balance you got going on there. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, since you've taken on the position of Game Operations, uh, things haven't been so normal. So coming into this new year where things are closer to some semblance uh, of normal. Yeah. What's that transition been like? We are super excited. Um, we're really excited just to get fans back um, in the stadiums. A lot of it last year was COVID, but some of it was construction um, of Finley Stadium. So we're just super excited um, to get back and have normal games again. How has game operations shifted with the new, the new plaza, the new athletic side of campus? Yeah, it's been a huge shift. Um, we've had to kind of reconfigure how we're going to um, ticket, how we're going to funnel people. Um, it's been a big change, but um, I think it'll be good. Speaking of COVID, uh, we've got to bring it up, of course, again. Um, how will COVID protocol function for game events? Yeah, so um, outdoor events, so right now that's football and soccer. Um, masks are not required, um, but recommended. And of course, uh, maintain social distance. And then for indoor events, so that's volleyball right now, uh, masks are mandatory, they're required, and uh, maintain social distance as well. Yeah. Um, another kind of change, several changes this year, has been a shift to hometown ticketing. So how do faculty, how do staff, how do, and then how do students uh, access their tickets for athletic events? Yeah, so this is a big change um, in our department. We've gone strictly to hometown ticketing for all of our sporting events. Um, so students and faculty and staff will log on to CamelsvilleTigers.com. There's a tickets tab at the top of the page. Um, they'll click on that and they can access um, a season pass. So all they put in is their student ID or their employee ID into the passcode box. They fill out all the information and it will send them an email confirmation with their ticket. Um, it looks kind of like a QR code and they just bring that to the gate and scan it um, at every ticket at home event. They download it one time and it works for all um, events across campus. The student ticket um, will scan one time per game. The faculty staff ticket, it looks like one ticket but it scans up to four times. Okay, so they can have three guests then, faculty, right. staff, yes. for each event? Yes. Awesome. We mentioned it at the beginning, um, you are also an assistant golf coach. Mm -hmm. What is that balance like between the more administrative game ops and then the golf, the daily, the daily grind of being an assistant golf coach as well? Yeah, uh, it's definitely difficult at times, um, especially when we've got a busy week with games um, and then we've got a busy week with golf. Um, but um, being just the assistant is very helpful. Um, I don't have to be at everything all the time. Um, and Coach Davis, the head golf coach, he's awesome to work with and um, he makes things a lot easier on me. But it definitely is a balancing act for sure. Well, as an athlete here at Campbellsville, you were kind of balancing as well. You were yeah. cheerleading and golf. So has that provided any benefit or insight as you balance these now in your in your job? Yeah, it definitely did. Um, I was able to kind of prepare for that before um, I got the position uh, balancing cheer and golf in college. So it definitely was helpful hmm. that I did that yeah. while I was an undergrad. You were training already without <laughs> knowing it for, right. this, for this new yeah. position. Yep. Um, so the rankings, the NAI, NAIA rankings mm -hmm. for, for golf came out for both men's and women's. Men ranked 16th mm -hmm. and women's ranked 15th. Mm -hmm. So what are your Im impressions uh, based on the, those rankings? Um, so I was very pleased with the women's ranking. Um, we finished the year last year at 23rd, barely missed the cut um, for nationals. So that ranking coming out was super exciting. We have um, all of our team coming back. Um, the defending national champion Gracie Parrott is back and um, we, we didn't lose anybody and we brought in um, a couple freshmen that have really helped. Um, so I have really high hopes for the women this year. Um, the men, we lost one, Justin Warman, um, but we have brought back the other four that we traveled and um, we brought in a couple freshmen that are really strong too and I think they'll really step up. 
what sort of changes does the opening up of the country and the lessening of COVID protocols, what kind of benefits does that bring to scheduling and what kind of benefits does it bring to uh, invitationals and going to different events? We are actually traveling a lot more this, this year um, because of lessened restrictions. So we leave in a couple weeks for Dallas, which we're super excited about. We've never traveled that far mm -hmm. um, for golf. And um, two weeks after that, we go to Florida. So a lot more travel than last year, which we're super excited about. I feel like that's sort of a reflection of not having the ability to do so. Mm -hmm. And now that you can, you're just like kind of gung ho about wanting to yeah. try these new things, go to these new places, make sure that you do travel because yeah. um, it's really a an awesome benefit to, to be able to do so. And yeah. uh, there's beautiful courses all, all, all around America. So yeah. um, what would you say of the upcoming season for golf, is there a specific invitational or a course that you're most looking forward for the for the golfers to, to uh, head to? Yeah, well, probably the Texas tournament and then the Florida tournament. Um, the Texas one is Texas Wesleyan. Their men and women are both ranked in the top 10, um, and there's really strong teams going to that one. And then Florida is Dalton State, and their men just won nationals. Their women just came in fourth. Um, so strong teams at that tournament too. So I'm excited to see where we rank up next to them. Um, in terms of game operations, mm -hmm. um, is there any issues that you've had to overcome making the transition from, you know, that's a lot of transitions at once. That's uh, figuring out the logistics of a new stadium, like you mentioned. It's the move from physical to digital tickets. Um, was there anything unforeseen that you all kind of had to think on the fly to overcome or? Um, yeah, um, ticketing has been a major, major shift. Yeah. Um, we've had to really think through a lot of that. Um, not only how to ticket, but where in the plaza at the new stadium to ticket. Um, there's not a super ideal place, um, but we've kind of had to work through that and figure things out. So it's definitely been a work in progress. Yeah, well, thank you, Michaela, for, for coming by. I, I appreciate it. And um, we'll be right back with more Inside CU Sports. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You could say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at org. Yeah. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Ah, the Green River of Kentucky. How'd we ever get so lucky to have this river green with more species than most have ever seen? An underwater zoo where we fish, kayak, and canoe. To help protect it, what can we do? Support Forever Green, and let's keep the green clean. Follow us on Facebook at Forever Green River KY. Wash your hands, stay home, cover your cough. It's our new reality with COVID-19. Physicians and public health professionals are trying to protect us because our healthcare system would be overwhelmed if too many people get seriously ill. We have to take their advice seriously. So prepare, focus on the essentials, protect, keep some space from people outside your home, and disinfect a lot. Get the facts at kycovid19.ky.gov. Prepare, protect, disinfect. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I do not love him.
Welcome back to Inside CU Sports, and for my final guest today, joining me is Savannah Moss, assistant women's volleyball coach. Savannah, thank you for coming by. Thank you. Entering your second year now with the women's volleyball team as an assistant coach, um, what do you think that you've learned as, from a coach's perspective from uh, the first year being so abnormal to this m more normal season uh, coming up? I think uh, we've learned a lot about um, effective communication with the team, um, how to get everybody on the same page and following all the COVID guidelines and whatnot that are still sort of in place this year. So. Coming from being a student athlete yourself uh, directly into to coaching, what do you pull from your experience as a student athlete here at Campbellsville? Um, well, I have a lot of different experiences here at Campbellsville. I had um, two different coaches and I had Coach Renata as my assistant coach. So being able to see the player's perspective has really helped me as a coach understand what they're going through. You know, through preseason, they're really exhausted, they're tired, but we're still trying to build that team um, spirit. So it's just helped me a lot understand when they need a break maybe or when they need to spend more time together or be pushed. So. Mm -hmm. and each season, you know, coming from uh, as a student athlete, I'm sure the, the culture was a little bit different given the roster. Um, how do you think, how would you define the culture of the team so far this year and, and moving forward? I think our team culture is, is really motivated this year. Um, we have a lot of girls from all over the place. We've got two local freshmen, a um, international transfer, another JUCO transfer from Las Vegas, and we've got still all of our our returners who are come from all over the place um, outside of the country or just different places here in the U.S. So it's awesome to see them all come together and be one. You all have had significant impact from new players this season so far, uh, whether it be freshmen with Molly Shannon, Sierra Merrick, or a transfer, uh, like you, you mentioned, international um, Salma Gonzalez Sosa. So. What sort of uh, benefit do, does that give to the stayovers, the, those who are coming back uh, for this season? Um, first of all, I think our returners are great. They mm -hmm. always work hard and have that fire to win. Um, but our new people, I think, bring this spirit of just wanting to play, and they um, are always happy just to be playing the sport that they love. They're all really solid players. Um, you can count on all three of them, even Julia, um, to come out and just work their hardest and be solid. You know they're going to score the point when you need them to. So. You all, uh, the volleyball team is 7-2 and two right mm -hmm. now. Um, last year, you, you all began 7-2 and two as well. Um, you ended the season 18-9, and nine, so um, that's still a great record, but every year you want to improve. Yeah. So at this juncture of the season, what are you all working on to ensure that your winning percentage is higher than last season? Um, a lot of what we're talking about in practice is being a team, but also, you know, that, that hunger to win, the drive to win. We, as Campbellsville, have come in second place a lot um, in Mid-South Conference, and so we're trying to change the mindset to that's not good enough. We want to be the best. Um, so our two main goals this season are to win conference and to appear and do well in the NAI tournament this year. Speaking of the Mid-South Conference, after you all face Indiana University Southeast, 16 of your remaining 17 games are against Mid-South opponents. Mm -hmm. So how do you all prepare for that knowing this last stretch of the season is going to be every game being pivotal? Yeah. Um, all of our conference teams are very good. It's like we're right there together. So we're really working on mentality. That's something we're talking about a lot in practice, just having the hunger to win because with the teams being so close um, in competition level, if you've got the extra mentality, I think that's what's gonna take you over the edge. So we're really working on that with them. Yeah. You all have went through already this season two separate tournaments, one closer by in Bowling Green and the other in Indiana, um, both you exited three and one. What were you able to glean from both of those that uh, it, or maybe impacting practices and then of course impacting uh, your game plan for the games yeah. moving forward? 
So at our first tournament in Bowling Green, we really had to play with the lineups and see what was going to work for us. Um, I think it's important to note that our two losses are from top 25 teams in the NAI. So those are games that we're learning, but we're also preparing for those conference matches. I mean, we need to figure out the best lineup against the best teams so that we're prepared um, for conference tournament. But I think that those losses have helped us kind of learn where we are and move forward to, mm -hmm. to come win some big matches. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Savannah, for, for coming by. I, I appreciate it. And thank you for uh, another episode of Inside CU Sports. We'll see you next time.